you think a man with talent like this guy would want to just hide out and be all alone? Uh, I've wondered that myself, my, myself, you know. I've been, uh, uh, wanting to get out of this world somewhere. Cormac McCarthy writes about outcasts, people living apart from society. His characters make aimless, violent journeys through the American landscape. McCarthy also keeps himself away from the world. He refuses to give interviews, and almost nothing is known for sure about his personal life. We heard he lived in a trailer park somewhere near El Paso. We believed it. One night in a bar, we were talking about McCarthy, and the three of us decided we'd go find him. We wanted to talk writing with him. We wanted to know what inspired him. strange that a writer so often compared to Faulkner, Melville, Mark Twain was still so unknown. It seemed as if McCarthy would rather remain in obscurity. With the release of each new novel, his biography gave less and less information about his life until there was almost nothing at all. so many stories about Cormac McCarthy uh, that it's, it's a very, very hard to separate the truth from. And I think you have to actually go into the man's writing to discover the truth. My first introduction to, uh, to Cormac McCarthy was when I went into a bookstore here in town, a used bookstore here in town, and I discovered uh, uh, a copy of Blood Meridian that had been autographed by Cormac McCarthy. And it had the astounding figure of $100 on the book. And the book wasn't that old. And uh, when I asked the man, he said, well, that's because Cormac McCarthy doesn't autograph books. So I guess you could say that we're, we are finding uh, sort of a Salinger myth springing up around McCarthy. The, the myth of Cormac McCarthy, I guess you could say, is a transient myth. It's sort of the myth of America. Uh, it starts off, I guess, you, in Tennessee, I believe it is, and uh, sort of wraps itself in a corkscrew fashion down to El Paso, uh, where he is, he's an enigma. Which one? It was the middle of the night when we reached Knoxville, which was a shame. We were hoping to find someone who knew him. Knoxville's McCarthy's hometown. He'd written about this river. I discovered him uh, just by getting a copy of Suchery off the shelf of the library down here. I'd never heard of him before. I just saw this black book with the tree spine, pulled it off, and then I started finding out about his other books. And at that time, Echo just had reissued some of the ones that were out of print, like Out of Dark, uh, The Orchard Keeper. I just went and bought all those. And finally read everything. They're always calling uh, Cormac the true successor to Faulkner. I think that's a little inaccurate because I think that, I mean, I know it probably sounds kind of blasphemous for me to say this because I'm from Marshall, but I think Cormac is a better writer than he was. 
That's that's my comparison. That's my honest evaluation. I, I think he's just, you know, I think if there's any 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 justice at all in our world, he'll get the Nobel Prize for literature. It's inconceivable to me for him not to get it. We had always planned to follow the course of one of McCarthy's books, traveling from Tennessee to New Orleans, then on to Texas. It turned out that we were following McCarthy's trail as well. I don't think you're going to find this guy, okay? Well, that's what I think. You think he's really in El Paso, or...? I think he's in Lonesome Dove. You know, I mean, uh, he's a real South Texas border guy. Uh, yeah, if there's a Lonesome Dove, he's probably there. Right. Well, why, do you, why do you think he's that way? Uh, I think he's a real loner. Uh, Actually, in a, lot of ways, in a lot of ways, this is all you need to know. And he probably didn't even say that. Think about it. I bet his publishers have a hard time finding them. After leaving New Orleans, we felt we could look for McCarthy anywhere and everywhere. We took to asking the people we met if they had ever heard of him, if he might have lived there, if he might have lived anywhere. My intellectual capacity allows me to, it's not a matter of diplomatic time, not logical, psychological, therefore dedicated to the proposition all men so good equal due to the fact, I don't mean to be so exact, but are you? So nice to be nice. You got a car? Have a nice day. You know, I say, I see the moon, the moon see me. Please, Mr. Moon, don't tell on me. Six times six is 36. Who my dick in a hell of a fit. And it shoot, boom, boom, boom. Do you know Cormac McCarthy, the writer, is a famous Texas writer? No, I don't. You ever heard of him? Mm -mm. How about you? Yeah. No. Is, is there... he supposed to have a museum here in Texas? No, I don't think so. No? We were hoping that there'd be some sort of a, a literary map to Texas or something like that. No. Texas writer. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have is this official Texas map. That's it. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> As we got into Texas, we were surprised how nice everyone was, how helpful. They all gave us advice, or told us how to go about looking for a writer. Which was strange. We had all had the idea that a trip out into Texas could end in badness. It was, after all, a violent country. Violence was part of the American story. It was a big part of McCarthy's writing. I imagine the three of us pulling up in front of McCarthy's trailer. Fumbling with camera equipment, one of us would approach his door. The next image is a shotgun pointed at my head. All I can do is recite the titles of his books over and over. The Orchard Keeper, Outer Dark, Child of God, Blood Meridian. Start to drive each other crazy after a while, pointing a camera at each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You really don't want to mess with anybody with a 12 gauge at quote, close quarters though unless you've got like an assault rifle. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and once again, secure your fire. This will blow a person to bits. <laughs> Let's just hope Cormac doesn't have one of these. He does. Yeah. This is all it takes to kill somebody. Yeah. yeah. Well, take yeah. about half that. <laughs> I think that's all it takes to cut them in two. <laughs> this, this is the way TV movies. <laughs> <laughs> sure, he's being friendly. Alright, you know, I'm just gonna show up here. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. But you never heard of him, huh? Cormac McCarthy? Cormac McCarthy. 
All the pretty horses that he wrote. All the pretty horses, Blood Meridian. Never heard of them? No? Huh. Is that you? No. <laughs> no, we're looking for Cormac McCarthy. Uh, Making a movie about him. <coughs> he wrote All the Pretty Horses. You ever hear that? No? Where are you from? Albany. Albany. New York. You guys are following fish, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're following them all over? Well, until uh, Tucson, two more shows, and then Jerry Garcia band starts up in California. And we follow him, and then it's time for great for that summer. So. You're always reminded of it. You never, you never escape that vision seeing what the country looks like while they're riding across and all these things are happening. And he's really he's really good about about doing that. He writes about Tennessee in the same way, he describes what the mountains look like and what the rivers overflow and all the the things in nature that happen and all the things in nature that have happened for a thousand years. And it's very, very beautiful and poetic the way he describes all that. We like the idea of McCarthy writing in cheap motels. We like that he was a loner, a writer's writer. He reminded us of the heroes of the Old West, tough, stoic, and independent. I guess we wanted to be like him. This here is what it's doing right now. And if you can see it through the clouds, it really looks like that. It's really funny to see it do that. Yeah, and it'll take, I think they say, 45 minutes to do the whole thing. That was really weird to come in here on the fence. What does that mean exactly? Uh, I don't think I have to explain that. <laughs> Someone does. I thought Eclipse meant something. It does. It's a sign. It's a portent. First day is a storm. Ushering us in. It's an apartheism. Does he have another name? It might be listed under the other for other name and then a C or yeah, it might be. could be a pen name. Yeah. Yeah. Well where in El Paso do you think that you would live? Well, there's all sorts of places. We uh -huh. had um, maybe up towards the west side, but going more towards Yeah, but see there's this but see there's all sorts of weird places. I mean heck, you know, if you were reckless you'd buy up our place. The only way you can get into our place is over the canal road. <laughs> um, place I lived before had access over private land and was completely landlocked. So there's there's plenty of oddball places. Uh, but I think you'd be better off if you did get an address, uh, dropping a note by or whatever, you know, just out of courtesy, because 
if the man really, really is a recluse, mm -hmm. he should respect that. El Paso was not what we expected. We had assumed it was a border town, wild and lawless. We didn't imagine McCarthy living next to a strip mall. We drove down Main Street, looking for a trailer park or some sign of him. What if the books were wrong and he didn't live in El Paso at all? Hello, how are you doing? I'm calling about your advertisement for psychic reading. I'm calling about your advertisement in the yellow pages for psychic reading. Okay. Why you did this? Well, the writer that we admire. Are you supposed to be here? Uh -huh. They didn't give you a nightmare on him? No, he's a he's a recluse. Huh? He's a recluse. He's a hermit. He doesn't like. He's a hermit. Yeah, no one knows where he lives. You want to invade him? He's not in the city. If he was in the city, I get strong blood race. He's in the suburb somewhere else. He's in the suburbs, in the lower valley, or it could be up in the upper valley. Not many houses around. They're kind of scattered out. There's mountains around him. He's looking down on El Paso. He's above the, the city. That means he's in a mountain somewhere. And it shows a cemetery that's down. The house where he lives is way above a cemetery. I see that he's like on a knoll. And it's in the mountains. And it's got knolls. People live in the knolls. This is what the cards are telling me also. He's got a house on a knoll, a little hill. And there you got a lot of little hills, and people build houses on top of them, expensive houses. The house that he's in is by itself. If he's a loner, and he doesn't get out much, you boys are looking for a needle in a haystack. I cannot pinpoint it. I cannot pinpoint it for you where he's at. Because if I did, I'd be tickled pink to tell you.
you have any idea like why I was walking up to El Paso? <laughs> Other than it's a great town. Said he lives in El Paso, Texas, huh? Yeah. No, I don't recognize him. Don't recognize him? I haven't seen him around? <laughs> ¿Usted conoce la street, Berchin? Sí, sí. Pues este, este, este es donde saca. ¿Qué es donde? Este en Berchin. Berchin. Sí. Este en el Senen de Blue. Ah, ahí es en el... Sí, este hombre. There's a blood bank. Blood bank there. Sí, ah, blood bank. Blood bank. Blood bank. Ah, He's there. Planet. You think he might be dead? How old is he right now? When was he born? 60 something. He was born in 33. He could be dead. Could be dead, could be alive. He just don't want to know nothing about the world no more, you know? You never, you, you wanna, you know, find this guy? Well, you never used the, the you know, the phone book, you know? You Check the phone book. Yeah? And he wasn't there? No, I'm listening. Oh, he's an alias. Yeah, we just came back anyway to El Paso. We just got out of the joint. What makes you want to stay in this world? Why don't you want to get out of it? Sometimes that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, have you actually thought about it, you know? I've asked quite a few places in libraries and bookstores about books on hermits and you can't find any. If a guy's going to be a hermit, so he wouldn't write about it. He don't want it to be known. Gauguin did the same thing or something a hundred years ago, but that's long gone. That's, you know, they got jets going in Tahiti twice a week or something. So it, it, you don't know where to get out, you know? <clears throat> what did this guy write about? Well, a lot about Texas. They're kind of violent stories, really. A lot of almost biblical language. Real um, sweeping stuff. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful writer. A long time ago, I lived in a village up in New York, and then I talked to some writers, you know, and I was thinking of doing that and all. But, uh, um, the odds are like one out of a million that somebody would be able to do it. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. I'm Jim Page, who knows? Who knows that everybody has magic and everything. But uh, people know my face. People recognize me and stuff and stuff uh, like that. Uh, knows because I'm Jim Page, who knows? You haven't heard of that? No, but I'm new here. So. Yeah, but it's all over the world. I, Animals, too, could uh, read my mind and see my face and read my mind and play back what I know, what I, everything I know, they could know. Okay. Uh, you ever seen this guy? Uh, McCarthy? Let's see, uh, no, I never have. I've never seen him before. Yeah. He wrote this book? Yeah, he wrote this book. He lives in El Paso. What book is this? It's called the Blood Bible. Is it? No. Blood Meriden. Oh, and he wrote that. Is that him on the horse? Or could be. Pick? Could be. This, this, this is him right here. Definitely. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. If I ever see him, I'll ask him for his autograph. Yeah, you should. Hey, he's, people he's ask good, me right? for my autograph yeah. and stuff. I'm, I'm not a rock star or a movie star, but. Uh, but people know who you are. Yeah, they know. Who, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Okay. And they, they never asked me for my autograph, and no cameras ever take my picture or anything. No, we got your picture now. Good, good. Uh, I, I want cameras to follow me. Yeah. It me never too. happens, uh, but I am famous. I'm Jim Page, who knows, and that, and the world has known me at one time or the other. Maybe not the whole world. Maybe a few people don't know, but, but most of the world has seen my face from a distance from the mind.
and they could see my face and everything. Yeah, yeah. So you got so you got a famous guy on your camera. Well, we're looking for him. Where where would you think he would live? Just just like if you know the world, maybe you could imagine where he would live. El Paso. El Paso is the best place in the world. It'd be all the bright lights and uh and the buildings and stuff. They look beautiful. Everything looks beautiful here. Land of the sun. Somewhere in El Paso, that's where he'd stay at. What kind of house do you think? A small brick house. Up on the hill. It would have it would have to be given to him with magic powers though because he wouldn't have any money. He no money. He'd have to be given a with magic powers given a house. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, that's the same with me. I'm out on the streets. I'm waiting for somebody to poof me up a house. <laughs> Uh, I have not, frankly, read his books, and I've never finished one. I find him too violent for my taste. So, uh, oh, is he sitting around here somewhere? Is he, is he um, in here ever? He comes in occasionally, yeah. I know him by sight. Um, I don't know where he lives, but he is extremely private. And um, um, I don't know anybody. I used to know somebody who ran a bookstore that he would stop in and see once in a while, but that bookstore is now closed down. So I really don't, I have no idea how to get in touch with him. Um, have you seen the article that a New York Times reporter wrote? No. It's a New York Times? We finally got, he got Mr. McCarthy to let, allow him to follow him around for a day. We can probably find that in our files. I sh we should have it. But um, never really told him anything in an entire day. <gasps> do do any other people come through looking for him, or was it that you know? Or? Oh yeah, I've been asked by the Times to help locate him. Yeah, but um, I really, I honestly don't know where he lives, and frankly, I would not intrude on his privacy anyway. He looked in the phone directory. I never looked there. Mm -hmm. yep. He's not there. All right, so he doesn't fit up to some sort of romantic ideal. That but I he have. does in a way because he's yeah, because he's this uh, he's on a higher plane, and he has absolutely no interest in obviously anything except for the writing that's the writing itself. He doesn't want to do interviews. He doesn't want to be on TV. He doesn't want to talk to reporters. He's not really interested in the writers and find that interest. And he's not even interested in selling books. Wife was saying that they lived in this barn and they bathed in the lake like, and yeah. running water. And they ate beans. And they ate beans. Just and people would call him up and offer him like two thousand bucks to do a lecture and he'd say, I've said everything I have to say in the book. There's nothing for me to say. Well, if we meet him, we should offer to leave him alone if he'll just wave at the camera. That's nice. No sound, nothing. there writes for the paper and he brought these gentlemen in here because they're making a they're making a, a film down here about a famous El Paso. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I can't really say. You know these guys? Uh, I know Bob real well. He, he introduced me to these other gentlemen here tonight. Okay. See what you all Yeah, I know Chen, I'm Chen. What's this? Uh, I think it's probably a fan. Is that right? What's this? Uh, I'm not sure. I have to know what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
guys got any weapons on you? No, sir. None? Nope. None whatsoever? Nope. You don't have any bags? Any bags with us? Right. Where at? In our car. In your car. Where's your car at? It was not that surprising that the cops were suspicious. A man had been assaulted up the road. They needed to find a criminal. We told them we were looking for a writer. We're doing a, a documentary about this guy. Uh, see all the books we have in there? Mm -hmm. Cormac McCarthy. He's an author who lives in the, You know him? I've been to his house a couple times. What for? Can't see it. You heard of him too? Yeah, everybody's heard of him. What was surprising was that the police thought Bob was also guilty. True, he had offered to show us Cormac's house, but he wasn't looking for any trouble. We finally did find Cormac's house. The man we had been looking for was less than 100 yards away. We sat out front, listening to his dog bark. Suddenly, we didn't want to find him. Suddenly, we wanted very much to leave him alone. We knew that what was behind that door wasn't what we were looking for. What we wanted was something more than a person, more than a writer. We were looking for something completely outside the world we lived in. in El Paso and, and I want it to stay that way. I don't want any other stars moving here. Maybe maybe to come see me and party with me, but not living in El Paso. That's my town. Uh, Mr. Noses. So you feel bad that what? maybe this guy lives here? He's not famous, is he? He is. Famous writer. But no Did one you knows. write that book? No, it wasn't me. Oh, okay. Wasn't that was some older man. It was this guy. Let's see, what was I going to say, though? Uh, I take my picture now. 